When Jesus commenced his public ministry, he based himself in the village, the fishing village of Capernaum on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And while in the beginning he would go into the synagogue there and in other towns thereabouts to preach to the people on the Sabbath day, it was not long before the crowds grew in such number that uh, he needed to preach in the open air. And so today we learn that he was on the shore of the Sea of Galilee and the numbers became so great that he was forced to find a boat, get into the boat, move out a little from the shore and preach to the people from the boat. Jesus attracted people to him. And they were drawn because they were inspired by his teaching. And also, no doubt, because they had heard of the miracles he had been working. Among those who came to listen to him speak, soon some would become devoted followers. They would become his disciples. We can also note that from the outset, Jesus began to invite particular individuals to follow him, like Matthew, the tax collector. And so Luke today gives us detail about the circumstances in which Peter, Simon Peter, would become a committed disciple. And the Gospel ends by Sir Luke simply saying that bringing their boats back to land, they left everything and followed him. In other words, they became full-time disciples. And they would follow him over the next three years or so wherever he went. The call of the Lord to Peter, we note, was to say that I'm now asking you to cease being a man who is catching fish and become a man who begin to catch people. In other words, Jesus wanted Peter not only to become a follower, but also to become a missionary. And he would advance from becoming a disciple to becoming an apostle. This, of course, was part of Jesus' pastoral plan for his time of public ministry. In other words, from the very beginning, Jesus had the church in mind and his work would need to be continued after his death and resurrection. And so from the very beginning of his public ministry, he set about laying the necessary foundations in choosing particular individuals who had become the foundation of his church. Calling a a person to take up the mission of serving the cause of Christ does require, firstly, that the person becomes a committed disciple. In other words, more than just occasionally receiving bits of formation and inspiration, listening to the Lord speaking in public, Jesus began to gather around him a core of committed disciples and these he would take aside and form more intensely. So while he spoke to the crowds and would continue to do so, we can also notice that as his public ministry went on, he gave and devoted more and more attention to his chosen disciples and began to form and teach them more thoroughly. He would later, if you like, send them out on work experience. He would send them out in in pairs on missionary journeys, telling them to preach and also to pray for healing for the sick. In other words, he was preparing them for that time at the ascension when he would tell them to take his mission to the very ends of the earth. This same pattern continues today. Among the members of the church, some are aware of a call to closer discipleship and to engage in the mission of the church. 
these Pope Francis calls missionary disciples. Like Isaiah in the first reading today, that they experienced some moment or some experience of the presence of the Lord in such a significant way that they want to follow the Lord more closely, more intensely. And they, in one way or another, will hear those same words that were given to the prophet Isaiah this morning. When the Lord said, whom will I send? And they find welling up in their own hearts, in the light of their own spiritual experience, a simple yet profound desire to be available, to do what the Lord wants them to do, to be instrumental in the continuation of his mission. So like I say, they say, here I am. Send me. So I mentioned at the beginning of Mass today, at the, uh, in this Mass following this homily, one of our seminarians, Kanishka Pereira, will come forward to present himself for the service, for service in the church as a priest. I will ask him at the beginning, in response to the Lord's call, do you resolve to complete your preparation so that in due time, through holy orders, you will be, you will be prepared to assume ministry within the church? Kanishka will respond because he is convinced that this is the Lord's call on his life. And it's not only his own initiative. Thus, he, like Peter, he knows that the Lord has chosen him to become a fisher of men. I will then ask him, are you resolved to prepare yourself in mind and spirit to give faithful service to Christ the Lord and his body, the church? So Kanishka is being asked to prepare himself inwardly in mind and spirit. In other words, he's being called by the church at this moment to pursue his own personal discipleship of the Lord more intensely now because he has reached the final stages of his preparation for sacred orders. So he's asked to become more attentive to the Lord. So the Lord, if you like, will finish the work of fashioning his mind and spirit and preparing him in such a way that he can undertake sacred ministry in the church. Jesus called those he wanted to follow him completely, giving up all other options in their life. And they responded, convinced that such sacrifice was worth it. And they were prepared, prepared to, be more, to be formed more thoroughly so that they could in their turn take up and continue the mission of Christ. And so this continues in the, in the church today. Not only among those who will embrace the priesthood or religious life, but it's also the case that lay members of the church as well know that Christ has in one way or another laid their hands upon their heart and upon their life. And they hear deep within their spirit, but without a conviction that they are being called forth to be missionary disciples. And so like I say in the temple, following his own experience of the glory of the Lord, they say, as he said, without hesitation, here I am. 
send me.